Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. So today I decided that what I wanted to make was uh, kind of like a curry for supper, curry and rice. And uh, most of the ingredients I already had on hand, went to the grocery store and decided that whatever I was gonna put in it was going to be the cheapest or the on sale protein. And I could have got chicken, I could have got beef or pork or mutton or goat. Um, all of those things I've put into this sauce and I really like them in this sauce. But, happened to be the cheapest protein at the grocery store this morning was shrimp. So I got shrimp instead. And I mean, I could put in any fish if you wanted to put in fish. This is the type of, of curry sauce or gravy, um, depending on what you want to call it, that would work incredibly well with tofu as well, or roasted cauliflower for that matter. Um, it's a very versatile sauce that goes with a lot of different proteins. It's got great flavor. So I put some ghee in the bottom of this pan. I'm just gonna heat that up. Um, for all intents and purposes, ghee is clarified butter. And if you don't have ghee or clarified butter on hand, go ahead and use any oil that you, that you have in your kitchen. I've got some red onion that's diced up and we're just going to saute off this onion. So saute these onions until they're soft and just getting a little bit of color around the edges. We don't want to burn them, we don't want to get them too crispy, but we do want to just sort of caramelize the edges a little bit. Okay, the onions are looking pretty good. Next in are uh, a couple of diced up green chilies. I've got these tiny little green hot chilies. Two of them diced up, I'm gonna put those in. You don't have to go wild with the chilies. You don't have to make it super hot. Uh, Julie and I traveled across India. We spent six months in India on the train traveling from town to town. And yes, some Indian dishes are blisteringly hot. But most chefs and cooks that we spoke to um, prized balanced, flavorful dishes over the ones that just punched you raw in the face with, with heat. And in, you know, sort of in an interesting, interesting fashion, um, Hot peppers aren't native to India and didn't arrive until, I think it was the Portuguese who brought them because hot peppers originate in Central America, Central and South America. So they arrived after Central and South America had been plundered by the Spanish. They take the hot peppers and the tomatoes for that fact back to uh, Europe and then European traders pick them up and when the Portuguese come to, come to the Indian subcontinent, they bring both of these to India. So these are sort of latecomers to Indian cuisine when you think about the entire time of humanity. Now, we're gonna put in some spices. I have, first off, some turmeric, coriander, cumin, and chili powder. Now the chili powder that I put in there isn't the same as American chili powder or Southwest chili powder or Mexican chili powder which is a mix of a bunch of different spices and the ground chilies. This is just ground chilies. So uh, next in, I've got some ginger and I'm using jarred minced ginger. Put in a dollop of that. The reason I'm, I, I, I sometimes pick this stuff up because it keeps in the fridge really easily, really does keep in the fridge easily and it's, it's easier to always have this on hand than to just go to the grocery store and buy a thumb of fresh ginger or a hand of fresh ginger. And then when you don't use it all, it goes bad. So I like to have this on hand and it's one of those sort of stopgap things. This is the same, except it's a roasted minced garlic. Uh, I keep it on hands for the same sort of reason. So we put that in, we're getting some good color there. It smells fantastic. Next in are some chopped up tomatoes. Now I'm gonna put in maybe about a half a cup of water uh, just to sort of loosen this up and get it cooking. I'm gonna bring the temperature up and I'm gonna get this up to a simmer. Now, the shrimp that I bought didn't have shells on them or tails. They were, they're raw shrimp, but they've had the shells taken off. If I had got shrimp with the shells still on, I would have taken the shells off and I would have simmered them in this water taken the shells out, thrown them away, and then used that shrimp flavored water instead of just plain water. If I had bought chicken, I would have used a little bit of chicken stock instead of the water. Same if I had gotten beef or pork. Um, 
pork stock I don't always have on hand. So it probably would have been water at that point or some vegetable stock or whatever you have on hand. If you wanted to do this with tofu, of course, then you would use vegetable stock. That would be fantastic in this dish. And if you don't have any of those options, don't worry about it. Plain water works just fine. Next in is an ingredient that I hate. And that's coconut. Uh, I'm not a fan of coconut at all, so I'm gonna put in some coconut milk. <laughs> and, and I know that doesn't sound right, but I gotta tell you, it somehow it works in this combination for me. It actually works, and it's an ingredient that I can't stand, but you know, in it goes. So I'm gonna put in about a cup of coconut milk. Now this is the point if I was using chicken, beef, pork, lamb, goat, etc. I would put that meat in now and I would simmer it for the next 10 or 15 minutes in this sauce. Okay, so that smells really good. Let's just give this a bit of a stir. Bring it all together and put a lid on. And so the shrimp are going to go in just before I'm ready to serve it because shrimp don't take too long to cook. Five minutes, seven minutes, something like that. They'll be cooked through really quickly. <clears throat> What I want to do is bring this sauce together and get all of those flavors to come together. So you can let this simmer for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. You could let it simmer all day long if you wanted to. You could make this sauce ahead of time. You could make it yesterday, serve it today, that sort of thing. Put it in the fridge. The flavors are going to come together and then you just put the protein in before it's time for serving. And then you just cook the protein for the length of time that it takes to cook it. Obviously chicken and you know beef, pork, those things are going to take longer. Fish are going to take not as much time. Tofu, like a really firm tofu, works in this sauce, and that you just sort of simmer it long enough that the tofu can suck up the flavor. So I'm gonna let this go. I'm gonna make some rice in the meantime, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, the rice is pretty much ready to go. I'll just take one last look at it. I've got the heat off and the lid just on sort of cracked open. The sauce has simmered down really nicely. Now, a trick that I learned while in India from talking to, uh, talking to chefs is that at the end, just before you put the protein in and just before you serve, to then add a little bit more of, of a spice mix. So I'm gonna put in some garam masala, about a teaspoonful. Sprinkle that in. I'm gonna put the shrimp in at this point. Stir those into the gravy. Now I'm gonna let this simmer on low heat with the lid on until the shrimp are just cooked. Okay. Rice looks pretty good. We'll get a scoop of that. Maybe a scoop and a half. Hey, Jules. Hey, Glenn. Hey, friends. That has a really sweet, like that's a very sweet smell. Well, we'll, we'll give it a go and see what it tastes like. I go forks, but I feel like if I put it in a bowl, I just the spoon would work too. The spoon would probably be okay too. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so it does smell quite sweet. Is, do you think that's strictly just the shrimp or is there, because shrimp tends to be sweet, or at least to me. It's, it's probably the coconut milk. Oh, you made something with coconut milk? <laughs> I did make something with coconut milk. Do I look surprised? <laughs> I am surprised. Mm. Totally works in this though. Okay. It's so a nice bite too. I put in those little green chilies. Oh. I put in two. Chilies are a tough one sometimes because you, sometimes from the same bunch of chilies, you grab a handful of them. <laughs> one of them, one of them will have no heat at all, and the next one will just blow your mouth off. 
Those two are on the hotter side of things. That's pretty good though. Mm -hmm. well, it's a nice base. Mm -hmm. So, like I said earlier, I use shrimp. I already have the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> do you have get Do you get hiccups when you when eat, eat something, something hot? hot? Mm -hmm. so I use shrimp because it was on sale. But it could have been chicken, could have been beef, could have been lamb, could have been pork, could have been goat, tofu. could have been tofu. Exactly. Chickpeas. Could have been any fish. Any fish. You could, you know, you could get frozen halibut fillets and cut them into little steaks and throw them in. Yep. Any light flavored bean. Yeah, chickpeas. You gotta throw in chickpeas in there. I mean, it is it, the base sauce is versatile. And I, you know, I hear you. It may not always be traditional or oh no but it tastes good and one thing we learned about traveling through india was you'd go to the next town over same dish same name completely different spicing but then that's the same as like if i asked you to make a stuffing oh how you make it how i make it how you make it our grandmothers would argue if, they, if our grandmothers had ever met <laughs> that would be an argument at the table about what was in the stuffing so um you know observe and understand where the food comes from but you know Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> See you again soon.